All right, good afternoon. Guys, how are you guys doing? Doing all right? Uh, the test about what? Artificial. OK. How's that going? Just going? That's with, uh, who's taking the? A present Bomber. Nice guy. He's a very good professor. Okay, so, okay, so last class we were talking about tensile strength, right? The tensile strength is the capacity of the rock to resist uh, tensile stress. And tensile strength is the maximum tensile stress than the rock uh, can receive. And then uh, I'll show you in this example in which I was trying to tell you that tensile strength is a quantity that depends on which direction you measure it, right? So this is equivalent of this example. If you have a whiteboard in a fractured rock, tensile strength in the direction perpendicular to the crack is going to be zero. And sometimes you can find these cases in practice. And it's very important to recognize uh, that sometimes the things that we measure in the laboratory, how we apply them in the field. In this case, if we were to assume that the rock, even though uh, we test samples that we get from the intact part of the rock, if we assume there is a tensile strength and you design a wellbore with that tensile strength, but then you find out that inside there are fractures, then obviously that tensile strength is not going to be correct, right? And this is just one example, but here in the, in my notes, I added a few more examples uh, of the importance of the size of the process uh, with the properties of the rock. Uh, in petroleum engineering, sometimes we have processes that are relatively small and on the size of the rock that you test in the laboratory, like for example, cutting rock in a wellboard or uh, having a failure around a wellboard. If there are no fractures and you're going to engage the inter rock <coughs> or the rock matrix. But if you go to bigger scale, for example, in hydraulic fracturing, uh, you wouldn't expect to see a rock which is continuous over a very long time, of, over very long distances. Over a very long distance, as you may see in outcrops, you will see that there are variations in rocks, there are joints, there are fractures that, uh, that have, have properties which are different to the property of the intact rock. So you have to take that into account. For example, here in this example of hydraulic fracturing, the size of your process uh, can be uh, half a mile very, uh, very easily. And in that half a mile, you have to understand what are the properties of that fractured rock in half a mile. And there are some other processes like, process like uh, reservoir depletion, uh, especially if you have a very long uh, reservoir that can be even several miles long. So the properties that you use in that case also have to reflect your rock at that scale. Okay, uh, so we talked about tensile strength, and uh, do you guys remember what is the strength that we measure for the rock that we tested in the lab? It was about something like 300 uh, PSI. Actually, I checked the video again, and the maximum was actually 550 pounds, 550C, something like that. So it was a little bit more than this, okay? But you know, in the order of 300, 350 PSI. Uh, the maximum tensile st strength of rocks is usually less than 1500 PSI. And and that it's uh, 
it's quite a bit compared to to the strength or some other uh, soft materials. But if you compare them to steel <coughs> or to some other um, stronger materials, it's it's not very high. <coughs> and compared also to the compression strength of rock, the tensile strength is relatively low. Of course, for uh, uncemented materials, uh, also we find that in nature, uh, if you just have uncemented sand, like this sand over here, its tensile strength is going to be zero. And you can find this type of uh, uncemented sediments. Uh, they are very common, in, especially in young sedimentary formations in which there has been a lot of time uh, for cementation to, to take place. And you have to know uh, those two. Okay, so that's it about pencil strength. Now we're gonna talk about one of my favorite topics, which is shear strength. And before we go and do an experiment here in the in the lab, uh, in our small log frame, uh, I'm gonna give you a hint of what's going on. So you try to understand and try to make an hypothesis about what you're going to see, okay? Uh, first of all, you guys, you all remember friction, right? Uh, shear strength is related to friction. Remember shear are st stresses which are apply on the plane of uh, the solid. And if you guys remember friction, you will very likely remember that if you had uh, a mass on resting on a surface, in contact with the surface, and you want to move this mass with a force Ft, this force Ft is going to be proportional to the normal force through what? Do you guys remember that? If this Fn and this Ft is going to be through the friction coefficient. The slope of this is going to be the friction coefficient. So uh, the equation here of this line is Ft is equal to the friction coefficient times the normal stress. OK? We, we, we all agree with that, right? Uh, OK. So now we're going to expand that concept, but for granular media and for rocks in general. So uh, today. I brought, let me take this out from here first. Today I, I brought this uh, package. Uh, anyone knows what, what this is? It's, it's, uh, it's a package of uh, something. I'm gonna tell you something for now, okay? I'm gonna show what it is later on. Uh, but, uh, it's something that you eat, okay? But I don't, I don't know if you if you know this from, from far away, but <coughs> this is quite a, quite a solid. It's like a brick, okay? So if I throw it, are you gonna grab it? Catch it. Okay, catch it. So you see, it's, ca can you testify it's quite solid and and I probably <laughs> no, you're not gonna be able to smell it either because it it's flows very well. So, but you know, it's very hard. If, if I were to, to throw this to someone which is not paying attention to the class, <laughs> and uh, I, I could hear somebody with this, okay? It's, it's very, very hard. And um, my objective is going to be to uh, put this in the low frame and uh, to, to see how much force it can take, okay? So, I'm gonna put this one in here. Uh, and uh, let me put it in the middle. Uh, yes, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, move the camera a little bit. Uh, so, uh, I can tell you that 
Omar, you, you're going to take the reading book this time, okay? <laughs> 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 Can you the reading book? Uh, should I say no? Uh, yes, like no. uh, Okay, Jeffrey told me that you can increase your bracket. Okay, okay, that's cool. Okay, so, so now it's, it's giving a small reading. Uh, it's negative, uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense to be negative, okay? Uh, but uh, it's giving a, a, a negative number. So Omar, you're going to tell the, the reading as it changes, okay? Sure, sure. Uh, so, um, okay, this, this is coffee, okay? This is uh, actually it's ground coffee. It's ground coffee, which of course is, is not cemented in any way, but it is in, in this package. And uh, the package, uh, it acts like a membrane and it is under vacuum, okay? Because if it is under vacuum, uh, let me come back here and dog camera. Oh, I have a dog camera already. It is. What is the pressure that I have outside? Atmospheric pressure, right? And if it, it is under vacuum, that means that I have almost 14 PSI everywhere. <coughs> okay, my question now is, um, how many pounds do you think I'm gonna be able to put on this package of coffee? Why 75? <laughs> Let, let's say the area, to me, this area looks like, say, three, three inches, three square inches. So I, I, I didn't run this test before, but uh, we're going to try to understand uh, and, and to prove that we're going to be able to put more or less three times the atmospheric pressure and three times atmospheric pressure, that's going to be uh, three times, uh, it's going to be about, let's say 50 PSI, okay? And 50 PSI times uh, the area, that's going to give me 150 pounds. So I think I'm going to be able to put 150 pounds, more or less, okay, over here. So you, Omar, you're going to tell the readings, okay? Since no, everyone cannot see what's going on. So now it's about zero, okay? And I'm going to start loading it. Is it increasing, Omar? Yeah, you got 0.8 pounds. OK, I'm going to go a little bit faster. Hopefully, eight, we'll have. 5 pounds, 6 pounds, 7, 8, 9. OK, a little bit louder, Omar. OK. So let, let, this is the following. 10 pounds. So when, when it, <laughs> ju just say, you know, 10, 20, 30, whenever it goes through that, OK? Gotcha. All right. OK. All right, 10. And then increasing. Uh, you, probably you can see from far away, but there's not, nothing going on in here. It still looks the same. Yeah, we have 20 pounds. And still increasing, right? Pounds. 40 pounds. 50 pounds. Okay, it's still working. Probably, I don't know if the, these rock slabs are going to break first. But already we have 50 pounds in this package. 60 pounds. Let's go a little bit. 70 pounds. Faster. 80. 80 pounds, already 80 pounds on this. So the people that, that say that it would be less than that. 85-ish, oh, 90 pounds. 90 and it's still taking load. 100 pounds. I need, I need to get a, a bigger display. I'm gonna talk to Jeffrey about this so everyone okay. Can, can see the numbers. I don't know if you guys trust Omar or not, <laughs> but uh, 120 ish. Uh, there are some other people also that can see the ring here. Oh, 120, still 120, okay? Yeah. So, you got 130 pounds. Okay. And so that's, that's quite a bit. 140 pounds. 140, okay. And now here it's starting to get a little bit harder to crank. Yeah, 150 pounds. 
150, okay. And, and probably you can see from far away, but now this is deforming this direction, so that's why the membrane is getting uh, like shrunk on, on the vertical direction. 160. Okay, 160. Let's see how far we can go. Okay, I'm gonna take new bets now. How far do you think it can go? 200. 400. 400? Mm. I don't know. We're, we're gonna calculate the area later again, but now it's going. Yeah, 180. I can tell you there is gonna be a maximum. For sure, there's gonna be more or less a maximum. Okay. Okay, now it's getting a little bit harder. Is it in going above 180? Yeah, it's 187-ish. Okay, but is it going to 190, something like that? Almost. I'm still cranking here the crank, so it's still deforming. And now it's 190. 190. And <coughs> I'm, I'm deforming it, and it's now going over 200, okay? So we're gonna take that as our maximum. Also, look at the load. And this is what we were saying before. What's ha happening with the load, Omar? As I'm not cranking it's anymore. Decreasing. It is decreasing. That's what we said about stress relaxation. That you keep this uh, distance constant, and this one starts to relax. So it's now 170 and going down. So the maximum was more or less 200, right? Okay. So what what's going on? Uh, with this uh, coffee. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, one more thing. I'm gonna take it out of here. And, oh no, no, I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna increase it again to about 200. And then, <coughs> I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut the, What do you think is going to happen? Now I'm going to cut this, the package. Okay, so I also want you to hear something, okay? 